Now, sweltering temperatures across the globe have put July on course to be the hottest month in recorded history, climate scientists say. Weather trends from around the globe continue to break records this summer. Last month was the hottest summer in June. Well, let's take a look now at some of the extreme weather we've seen so far in July. And temperatures are reaching unprecedented levels in some of the most unexpected places. Here, Anchorage, the capital of Alaska, 32 degrees over the weekend. But then if we move to Canada's, Canada's Arctic, now this is alert, the northernmost territory uh, on the planet. They enjoyed a balmy weekend of 21 degrees Celsius. But this is clearly a global problem. Now, if we head to Chennai in India, now there's a unexpectedly hot and dry season that's causing havoc there. But if we move to northern India, an early monsoon, that is causing severe problems for farmers in northern India. And then here in Europe, of course. Now we had a sweltering June, but now July looks like it's going to bake records once again with concerns over forest fires raised again. Now, atmospheric scientist, uh, and he's a professor, Michael Mann, he joins me now for a closer look at all these details. Well, thanks so much for joining us. So, as we were saying, June broke records. It looks now like July is going to be doing the same. Are we now in a pattern of continually breaking these climate records? Yeah, I hate to say that we told you so, but we told you so. We, we predicted this decades ago. If we continue to burn fossil fuels and pump carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and warm up the planet, we are going to see more prolonged and more extreme heat waves. And, and that's playing out now in real time. Uh, we saw that last summer, we're seeing that again this summer. And what you know, we think of as you know, unprecedented extreme record heat today, the latest studies show that if we continue on this path, if we if continue to burn fossil fuels for decades to come, then the hottest day we've ever experienced will be a typical summer day in the future. And given this pattern that is in place that you're describing, have we actually now reached the point of no return, whatever is done to try and tackle climate change? Well, you know, sometimes uh, people will say, you know, we've reached a new normal as if we've arrived at a new period. But that's not the way it is. If we continue to burn fossil fuels, we continue to warm the planet then the heat will become more extreme, then the heat waves will become of longer duration. And so every effort that we make now to lower our burning of carbon, to move away from fossil fuels to, to renewable energy, uh, every bit of progress we make there is going to prevent uh, further exacerbation of this problem. But make, make no mistake about it. Um, the impacts of climate change are no longer subtle. We're seeing them play out in real time uh, and that's what we're dealing with here right now in Europe, in North America, unprecedented heat waves and wildfires and floods and superstorms. This is what we predicted would happen. It's happening. We can prevent it from getting worse if we act now. OK, so you've predicted this was going to happen. What about migration flows? Can you predict what's going to happen in, in terms of those people trying to escape these unbearably hot temperatures? Yeah, well, uh, we were looking at those temperatures in India, and they've experienced uh, record heat uh, that goes far beyond anything that we've really seen before. Uh, one of the predictions that was made decades ago was that if we continue to warm the planet this way, then the tropics will essentially become too hot for human habitation. And we're seeing hints of that now in Pakistan, in India, in other places within the tropics, uh, temperatures that are just simply too high for human beings. And what happens when you've got less land, um, less land area where people can live, you've got less food and less water because of the exacerbating effects of climate change. Uh, you put that all together, it's a perfect rep recipe for conflict and for a national security crisis, which is what we're seeing now today. Got so unbelievable ramifications from all of this. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, Professor Michael Mann.